fields have been certified organic for 20 years. It involves a yearly inspection and it involves uh, following the rules. The investment we make in being certified organic is uh, helpful to us and it's, it helps make me a better farmer. <laughs> We do not use the organic label. We would prefer to um, define ourselves as sustainable and chemical free rather than to use the organic label. And there are a few reasons for that. One is that the government owns the label organic and so you have to buy into their usage of that term. We don't have policies that ensure sustainability and we should. So to be an organic farmer you cannot use synthetic pesticides or synthetic fertilizers, and those regulations are laid out by the USDA. Corporations are controlling USDA policy, and I don't think you want corporations to control policy. So I think what we have is you know, a system that's so flawed in terms of small-scale farmers being able to really function in the way that they would need to, to be totally organic or completely local or you know, to operate within a regional food system that we're still just trying to rebuild. You know, there are several ways to control people. One of them is religion, one of them is money, the other one is food, you know, and whoever owns the food owns your soul. Monsanto is a large company based out of St. Louis, Missouri that, that controls a lot of different and produces a lot of different products for agricultural systems. So typically when we think of the USDA and its relationship to companies like Monsanto, we're really talking about the relationship around a few big crops. We're thinking about corn, soybean, wheat, cotton, and these are the same crops that get the biggest government subsidies. I really find it kind of sick that we're watching people like Michael Taylor come in uh, and work in, in government functions that are supposed to be protecting us from harm. A GMO typically is thought of as genetically modified organisms where you're taking genes from one species and putting it into another, but it can also be from one variety of a plant and put it into another variety of the same species. So anything where you're taking out a piece of DNA is a GMO. And then the other part of it, and, and this is less specific to GM technology, is the, uh, is the corporate structure. It's the fact that a very small number of companies have made vast amounts of money from this technology and they own it. They own the those particular um, GM life forms. You shouldn't be able to do that. If, if nature made the gene, then why does company A think that they can patent the sequence for that gene? I think that's a problem. I think we have a serious problem in um, big agricultural business in this country with the largest co corporations such as Monsanto monopolizing um, the genetics of seeds and crops. People who are planting crops and farming the land have the right to save seeds from the crops and replant those seeds. That is very much a part of a lot of sustainable farming operations, keeping seeds from the crops that you like and know best and perpetuating those lines.
if one uses commercial seed that is from varieties that Monsanto has developed, particularly the GMO ones. They've taken certain farmers to court for replanting seed from the crops that they've grown from those seeds, saying that they own not only the seed that they're selling prior to the sale of the seed, but they own all of the progeny for all of the generations that that seed might ever into the future perpetuate. The ability of farmers to save seed from a crop, they would save a small amount of it and then they would plant that the next year. And there's been some widely publicized inst instances where companies have kind of gone after those farmers. Yeah, I think it's really important um, for our dollars to reflect our politics because I personally I believe that our dollars are better vote than what happens in the ballot box. Um, I think the corporate control of the government is so deep and so wide ranging that if we keep our dollars away from certain products, away from certain companies, we can really affect that company. We can really affect that process in a very direct way. We can starve them to death if we don't give them any money. I want to read a quote um, from Wendell Berry, uh, the farmer and uh, poet and writer. The passive American consumer, sitting down to a meal of pre-prepared or fast food, confronts a platter covered in inert, anonymous substances that have been processed, dyed, breaded, sauced, gravied, ground, pulped, strained, blended, prettified, and sanitized beyond any resemblance of any part of any creature that ever lived. If I have a goat that is showing signs of illness, I feel that it is my responsibility as the manager of that herd and that individual goat to treat it in the best way that I feel that I can, which for me involves using antibiotics when necessary. My personal philosophy on um, livestock management is that it's not worth sacrificing the animal's life for the sake of not using those medications. If we did have the organic label here and an animal had, for example, mastitis or a respiratory infection. Once she was treated with antibiotics, then she would have to leave the herd, either be sold out of the herd or be killed out of the herd because her milk would no longer be acceptable under the organic label. And my animals are not simply production machines here. They are individual animals, each with a name and each with a relationship that I have with that animal. If you feed your animals non-organic feed, you can't use that manure to fertilize your fields. Um, and that doesn't seem very sensible or sustainable to us. Our primary source of fertilizer here is in fact the animal manure. In fact, the animal manure is probably about as valuable as anything else we get from the animals. Then to think of bringing in some other outside source of nutrients to uh, feed our crops just doesn't really make sense. There is organic livestock feed available. There's a bill in Vermont that makes um, organic feed. I know people who are using those feeds. They cost literally twice as much as the commercial feeds. Um, and I just cannot afford to feed those feeds. The organic process became uh, a USDA, Department, United States Department of Agriculture program so that organic would be the definition of organic would be the same across state, the states. Of course, that introduced the federal government and the bureaucracy that goes along with it. So some organic growers, some people who decided not to go along with the program and are still good growers and are growing uh, maybe the same, same way they were growing before, and it could be totally organic. Uh, but they can't call it that anymore. We're against Monsanto today, but we're for taking back our food, voting with your fork, and people before corporations. 
We march against Monsanto, but we're here for a transparent USDA, FDA, and EPA. We march against Monsanto, but we march today for our kids and our future, because that's the most patriotic thing that we can do. Thank <laughs> you.